Welcome back to the OOP PHP training. If you're following this series, you know in the last video we built this one. We filled out all three columns using object oriented PHP classes and we use static method, regular method, and several WordPress functions to accomplish this. And if we go back, we will see that under this classes folder, these are the two classes we use. This is the regular class, and this one is a utility class which has just a few static methods. And what we did, we called these classes up in a template file. Which one? If we go back, if you look at the lower right hand corner here, the template name is template test OOP. So let's go find it. This is the template, and here we called it in the first class test OOP WP. We instantiated it and called in the methods like this. And the utility class, since it had already static methods, so it did not need instantiating, so we just called them directly like this. And thus we build this result, right? Since we were focusing on classes, objects, methods, etc., we did not focus too much on file construction. And the reason uh, we could just directly call up our classes right here in this template, like that, is because in our functions file right here, we just added these two lines, which basically calling these two classes directly. Now, the thing is, there's a lot better way to do things like this instead of calling each classes, because inside this folder, you might have 10, 20, 100 classes, right? So if we keep doing this this way, then we have to call up every single class like this, and it's going to fill up your functions file. So the better way to do things is this way. Basically, we need to call up this PHP function right here, SPL, SPL auto load register. Here's uh, multiple examples here. So what we're going to do, we're going to write a function with this in it, SPL auto load register, which actually calls up another function which uses uh, class names as an attribute. It loads up all the classes automatically. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and inside our functions folder, we we'll create another autoloader folder and have in a, one more file. And this file, we're going to write the function and we're going to call that function in here. So instead of one line for each class, we're going to have just one line calling that autoloader function and that will load up all our classes automatically so that any of our templates later on, like this, we can keep using our classes at will. So now let's go see how we're going to accomplish this. All right, guys, so, but first we're going to start with breaking this. You can see all, everything is working, but let's go back here. So I just commented everything out, right? And now let's see what it does when we refresh and it's broken, right? So it is not finding whatever it's looking for. All the classes are missing. So now let's go see what changes I have made. Uh, if you look at this side here, uh, you will see that I have changed my class names or file and file names. You class names also inside, if you see, I just added a prefix called my underscore right and accordingly i also went to the template files and made the necessary changes here and here right and here's the reason why this is our class auto autoloader file right here and this is where i called in that spl autoload register function and passed along my function name to make it all happen and here I'm calling the class autoloader function right here which is taking in class name as an argument right so first let's see if everything is working right because it was broken so let's go back to the function file and enable this and this is where we are calling 
this function right here, class autoloader PHP, right? This is the function file, one line loading this up, and this is the function. So let's go and see if everything is working. Boom, there you go. Everything is working magically, right? Now let's go see why. So uh, I kept in a bunch of uh, var dumps in here just so that I can explain things. It's a simple function, you know, just uh, taking in all the class names. So let's see what it loads up when we just, you know, load it up without any prefixes, right? This is, this is where we will explain why we had to use the prefixes. So let's uh, enable this one, var dump. Go back, refresh. And look at that. It loaded up every single class it found in the entire WordPress installation. I mean, as you can see, the ACF, some port switcher from all the plugins and everything else is loading it up. So, and as you can see, even they are using prefixes. See, ACF using ACF prefix, and everybody has their own little prefixes going on to isolate, right? So for that reason, Let's uh, disable this for now. Okay, so that's, re that's the reason we had to change our file names and class names and adding uh, prefixes. You can add anything you like, but make sure they're unique, right? Because uh, this is the thing that separates your classes from other classes. So now let's see if we enable this after this filter. And uh, this is just a usual strpos php function. Basically, we are just throwing the class name in there and checking for this prefix, looking through the string. And if we find this prefix, only then we will continue on. Otherwise, it will return back to the loop. And you can find out all about this function here right here in the PHP manual, and there's a whole bunch of examples here to work with. Now let's get, get back. All right, so after this filter, we're going to see what classes names does show up, right? Let's save this, and let's go back and refresh. And there you go, right here. At the very beginning, we instantiated this class, so it found it, and in here, we use the filter class, myUtils, and it's showing it right here. So the two classes that we used in our template right here, it actually found it and showing it to us. So let's disable this, save. And here, what we did, we went ahead and get the uh, template path, and uh, which is all the way up here, the template name, and then we added underscore classes folder because that's where we are putting all our classes so that will create our full path and we added an extension which is .php because all these files will have .php extension and thus we created this full path variable and let's see what this full path is let's go enable that and go ahead and refresh here Okay, so now it will show us the whole path of both classes after we, you know, build up, added the underscore classes folder and the extension and everything, right? But here you might notice like there are some backslashes here and then forward slash kind of mixed up, right? And that's because it's basically a cosmetic issue on a Windows platform. But we do have something we can do about that. So WordPress thought of everything. Let's get a filter up here. Right up here, let's add this filter, which is pretty much theme file path is the filter. And we're going to send this argument, which is WP normalize path. Now that we saved it, let's go back and watch what happens. See these backslashes and forward slashes? Let's refresh. And look at that. They're all now backslashes. Now, if this was a uh, Mac platform, right, or any uh, Unix or Linux based platform, there will always be that way. There is no question about it. Only Windows does that. So 
you know, that filter actually, you know, fixes uh, this issue in case you need to use this uh, uh, whole path and, you know, in a variable use somewhere else, right? So that fixes that. And this is how we just, you know, disable that. And at this point, now that we found all our classes, all the paths looking right, we just then put it require once full path. So every single class that comes through here gets filtered out. If they don't have that my extension, then it goes back. But if they do find the my extension, then it passes along. And then here we take that and create a full path. And once we get the full path, we create the require once. And it's full, you know, it keeps on going until it finishes. Let's say now we have two classes here. If we have 50 or 100 classes, it would look through 100 times and create all those paths and load them up. And then this one line, just calling that function will resolve all the problems. So if it is 100, 200, no matter how many number of classes, we get to load them into our template file just like that. Now, okay, we do have the solution of this. We auto loading and everything, right? But the thing is, we're not gonna put all our classes in one folder, right? I mean, even if you put like 100 classes here, that's not gonna be organized very much, right? So we have to manage them in folders and that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so we are back and now we made a little bit of difference here. As you can see, our classes are now inside the folders. The first one is under the test folder. The second one is under the utils folder. And we kept this uh, auto loader class exactly the same. So let's go see how everything looking at the front end. All right, so looks like everything is broken again. Nothing is being found, which is normal. So let's go back. And at this point, what we're gonna do, we will disable this full path here and disable this one okay we're no longer going to do this because from this point on our paths are going to be dynamic we're going to go inside each folder and look for our classes but meanwhile as you can see here everything is remained the same and in our functions file everything is the same okay so now here let's bring in one segment all right, let's save this. And uh, what's happening here is that we're keeping the base path is the same, the extension is the same because there's no change there. But in here, we're creating another variable called paths, and we are delivering our folder names here, test utils. Let's say if we have uh, you know 15 other you know folders here, we just keep adding them in this array and everything will t be taken care of. So what happens is now we do a for each on this path. We each time we keep sending one of our folder names and it's going to go in there. And here we're going to declare another uh, variable called current path. Here we're going to bring in base path and uh, class name extension as you know, everything right here, class name, base path extension and only thing will be changing is the path. Each time is gonna be replaced with another new folder. So we're gonna to go to that, this uh, you know path we're gonna look at later, but let's first see if this fixes anything. So once we have our current path established, according to the folder, in here we're going to go ahead and check if the file exists. If the file exists, then we have another var dump here. Let's uh, disable that, okay? If the file exists, then we're going to go ahead and do require once current path. Just like we were doing require once full path because we had only one folder. But here, for each folder, if we find the file, we're going to set up the require once and then we're gonna break out of the uh, loop here. So now that this is all set, so let's go and see what happened here. Let's refresh and everything's back if we go inside this if logic where we are filtering for you know by checking the file's existence now you will see well my util class inside util and 
my test class inside the test folder. And everything is working perfectly as they were. And this uh, concludes this video. On the next one, we're going to go one step farther. We're going to go ahead and install Composer and implement PSR4 namespacing. If you like this video, please smash the like button and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.